It is extraordinary, Chuck, to be standing in a place that is as backed up as the West Coast is. We, in fact, took a tour of the port of Oakland, where I am standing back in April to see how they were uh, sort of, you know, considering the future. And let me just try and put it in perspective for you. I want you to listen to the executive director of the port of Oakland, who at that time was staring down the barrel of what he knew was an incredible crush coming his way. Have a listen. We are busier than ever. And uh, the pandemic has changed people's habits in terms of buying stuff, uh, uh, repairing their home, getting more furnishing, appliances. So all that stuff is coming through the Port of Oakland for this region. And we are seeing a boom of people buying and shipping through uh, Asia to the Port of Oakland. So just to talk about what exactly that then means here on the ground, if you think about the Port of Oakland, you know, since then, they basically, like so many California ports, had to, uh, they basically had shippers turning away because the lines were too long. In August, their numbers were actually down because ships simply weren't arriving here. Since then, they have added shifts. They've put in some new uh, world-class cranes. They've truly had to transform their operations to get it going. But now we're still facing the problem of what you do once things come off the boat. You, at that point, need trucks to carry things away. There's a huge shortage in truckers themselves. We have a rail car shortage. I mean, the, the the, the gaps go on and on. And that is why, Chuck, so many companies have now stood up with the White House or expected to stand up today and say, we will start moving to a broader uh, schedule that Walmart, UPS, FedEx, as you mentioned, are going to move yeah. toward a 24-7 operation in off-peak hours. All of that being this extraordinary effort on the part of the White House to orchestrate what used to be the free hand of the market. And that just hasn't been doing it.